This Let's Edit with MIDI Composer tutorial is brought to you by VideoGuys.com, the leading reseller of video editing and production equipment for more than 25 years. Check out VideoGuys.com for great deals on Avid MIDI Composer software licenses, subscriptions, and upgrades, and use coupon code MC101 for 5% off any purchase. Hey everyone, Kevin P. McAuliffe here and I am back again with another Media Composer 101 tutorial and in this lesson I want to wrap up our look at archiving our projects inside of Avid Media Composer. Now, you'll remember in the first of our three-part look we talked about doing a backup with only the tools that we have at our disposal inside of Avid Media Composer. In lesson two, we talked about a fantastic utility called Media Mover from Random Video, and I showed you how that utility works at basically taking either you know, a single sequence or your entire project out of Media Composer and to be able to archive it very quickly and very easily. Now, in this lesson, what I want to do is take a look at another utility from a company called Automatic Duck, and the product I'm talking about is called Automatic Duck Media Copy very simple very straightforward name and basically that's what it's going to do it's basically going to take the media from Avid Media Composer and it's going to copy it into a destination of our choosing now if you're not familiar with Automatic Duck by name you definitely are familiar with their reputation Automatic Duck is most famous for coming up with the very first way to take your Avid Media Composer timeline directly into Adobe's After Effects. Now if you take a look inside of After Effects these days, you'll see an import feature called Pro Import for After Effects. Well that originally used to be called Automatic Duck Pro Import. So when it comes to working with utilities inside of Avid Media Composer, Automatic Duck is definitely an expert in that category. And in this lesson I'm going to show you how this simple tool is very effective and to be honest very powerful and it's going to let you back up your sequences very quickly and very easily. Okay, short introduction here, let's just get into Media Composer and let's get started. Okay, so let's command and tab into Avid Media Composer, obviously an alt and tab for my Windows friends out there. And I've created a very basic sequence. Now to be perfectly honest, it really doesn't matter what my sequence is doing. You'll see that I've got a clip in here that I've just thrown in a picture and picture effect. I rendered that, I threw some music in, and I put four shots into this timeline. Now of course this is going to represent our you know two hour long documentary that has you know 15 layers of audio and six layers of video with a whole bunch of effects that are all rendered. And basically what we're going to be doing with Automatic Duck Media Copy is not focusing necessarily on an entire project, but we're going to look at this on a sequence by sequence basis. Okay, So you can see that I've got a sequence here, I've called it appropriately enough final sequence. Okay, And what we're going to need to do is that Automatic Duck Media Copy is not a, you know, it's not like a plugin that you're going to be working with inside of Media Composer. Everything that's going to be done, much like with Media Mover, is going to be done outside of Media Composer. So what we're going to need to do is to get these sequences out of our obviously editing application. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to take my sequence, I'm simply going to, and then what I should actually do before I do that is let's just select the whole sequence here, there we go, perfect. I'm going to right click, I'm going to say export. Okay. Now what we're going to do is we're going to create a new preset. So what I'm going to do is I'm simply going to hit options. Now, if you're familiar with the process of the Pro Import for After Effects workflow, essentially this workflow works exactly the same. What we need to do is we need to set up an AAF for export. Okay. Now, in this case, you'll see that I'm including all the video slash data tracks in the sequence, and we're just going to be linking to the media. We're not embedding anything or transcoding anything. Everything that we do is going to be a link to. Now, in this case, I'm going to do the exact same thing with the audio as well. We're just going to link to it. We can include rendered audio effects if we want to, but for, you know, for the purpose of what we're doing, I don't have any rendered audio effects. And we can really leave everything else on its most basic, just literally leave everything blank. Okay. And we're going to call this a save as. I'm going to call this automatic duck media copy. I could call it media archive. But we'll just call it media copy just to give it the exact same name as the utility that we're going to be using. I'm simply going to say save. We're going to head to the desktop. I'm simply going to say save. And literally, in a couple seconds, I have the AAF on my desktop. Now, obviously, your mileage will vary based on how much footage that you have inside of your Media Composer timeline. But then again, remember, we're not actually moving any media. This is only information that we're exporting. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm simply going to hide Avid Media Composer. I'm going to navigate down to the bottom here. You'll see here's my automatic duck media copy application. I'm simply going to open it and you'll see 
that it really is a very basic application. Now, what's important to keep in mind is let's say I had, you know, nine different sequences inside of my Media Composer project. I would take each one of those sequences individually and export them onto my desktop. Okay? So basically, the first thing that Media Copy wants to know is well, what is the file uh, that we want to copy? We want to take all the information that's stored in this final sequence AAF and that's what we want to use to have it look for all of our media references. So all I'm going to do is simply take this one AAF, or again it could be multiple AAFs, and let's drag and drop it right in here just like such. Now we do have a few options inside of Media Copy, but again, like I said, this is a very basic application because to be perfectly honest, you know, sometimes the simplest is really the best. Okay. So the first option that we have that might sound kind of funny is also copy above edit slash sequence files. Now what does that mean exactly? Well remember what we're going to be doing is we're going to be doing a media copy. So you might plug a drive into your computer. You're going to send all your media to that drive because maybe you need to take it over to your friend's house or a colleague's house or something like that to you know to work, keep working on the project. And you get all excited. You copy that media over. You run out of your house, get to you know your colleague or your friend's house, and you realize that you didn't actually bring the AAF sequence with you. Well, the best part is, is that by doing it this way, you can actually send a copy of the edit slash sequence with the media when you copy it over. Now, what we also have the ability to do is to preserve the source media path. So I'm just going to deselect that for right now, and I'll show you what that does in just a second. And the last option we have is to include Avid rendered media files. So obviously, if you've got, you know, in this case, I showed you that I had a rendered effect in my timeline. This is going to copy that rendered media over as well. If you really don't care whether you have to just do a quick re-render, then you don't need to worry about this because obviously you'll be saving some space from copying over all that rendered media. What I need to do now is to simply choose a folder this is going to go to. I'm going to send it to the desktop into a new folder called, uh, let's call this Take Me With You. Why not? Okay. I'm going to say Create. I'm going to say Open. And then I'm simply going to say Copy you'll see that basically automatic duct media copy is going to go through my AAF, look at all the clips that are referenced in there, take them, and copy them into the folder on my desktop, the Take Me With You folder. Now, what we now have is the ability to take a look at an HTML log for some results. So what I can do is simply say, open that. I'm going to be brought into Chrome or whatever browser you happen to be using, and I can actually see exactly what the clip name was and what track it was on. I can see where the source path of this was, and what the actual MXF file name is, as well as the size of the actual file itself. So basically, if you had a thousand files, you're going to be able to go through and see all of the files that were copied over. Obviously, if there's any issues, you'll also find that in here as well. Okay. So basically, what we have now, and I'm just going to quit out of Chrome. Uh, I'll just move automatic duck media copy over here. Is that if I come into this folder, you're going to see that I now have not only that document that I just took a look at here. Let's open this with Chrome here. There we go. So basically the exact same media uh, media copy log, and I'll just quit back out of Chrome. But here is all of the clips that are associated with that sequence. Now, what's important to keep in mind is that these clips down here, the Video Tracks HD ones, represent all of the actual media in my timeline. These two clips, A01 and A02, represent the audio, left track and right track. And this clip right here represents the rendered media. You'll see it's called Final Underscore Sequence and it's a 3D warp, which was the name of my sequence and the effect that I used. And of course, because I told Automatic Duck Media Copy to take that sequence, or that in this case, the AAF file, and copy it over as well, you can see that there it is right there. Now, what's important to keep in mind is that what we could do now is basically take our Avid project, we could copy it into the same folder, we could copy it here, or we could copy it just into the main root, and take the project with us as well. What's important to keep in mind is that you're only copying the media over that's associated with the sequence or sequences that you happen to be sending. Okay. Now what's also important to keep in mind is that even if you only use two seconds of a clip that's 30 minutes long, all of that clip is going to get copied over, not just what was in your timeline. So if you really want to, you know, let's say just say shorten up all the media that you have there. Maybe you're just doing a, you know, a show with all drones and, and each clip is like half an hour long. What you might want to do is a consolidation of your footage first to shorten it all up using handles and then come in and use automatic duck media copy. Okay. Now what I'm actually going to do is I'm just going to select everything here. I'm just going to delete it all because I wanted to show you the other option in here, which was to preserve the source media paths. All I'm going to do is simply check that box. Everything's going back to the location it was going to before. I'm simply going to say copy. And you'll see that as it's copying, what it's doing is, 
is that it's actually creating, and you'll see of course it's gonna open my media copy log, we'll just close that. But what it's done, first of all, for my AAF, is it's created a folder for me called media copy source files, and in there, there's a folder called users, a folder called me, of course, a folder called desktop, which is exactly where this is located on my Mac, and there's my sequence right there. Now, of course, the media that's associated with my timeline right now is located on my G-Speed Studio RAID. It's located inside of my Avid Media Files, inside of MXF, inside of One, and it'll be found in here if I sort by the date modified. You'll see there they are right there. There's Daily Grind and my Video Tracks HD clips. What's very cool now is that what's happened inside of my Take Me With You folder, because I have preserved the source media paths, is I now have a folder called, appropriately enough, Avid Media Files, called MXF, called One, and there are my clips right there. Conceivably, if I was you know, putting this onto an external hard drive, all I'd have to do is take the Avid Media Files folder just like this, drag and drop onto that hard drive. I could go into Media Composer, import this AAF, and it will immediately look for that media on the drive inside of the proper hierarchy. So you can see that Automatic Duck Media Copy is a very simple to use, yet very powerful utility for you to use with your Media Composer timelines. Now the question is, which is better? Well, as you'll remember from my tutorial on Media Mover, that was really more so about moving all of the media associated with a project. Whereas with Automatic Duck Media Copy, it's really about just taking media that's in specific sequences, not necessarily everything, but specific media and being able to quickly copy it over to an external hard drive. Now again, in my own opinion, if you do obviously a lot of backing up of your projects, you're definitely going to want to choose a third party utility such as Automatic Duck Media Copy to back these projects up because really it's just going to make your life easier and it's going to save you a ton of time in the end. For more information about Automatic Duck Media Copy, you can head on over and check them out at redgiant.com. Now, before I wrap up this lesson, I want to thank our sponsor, Video Guys, and don't forget to check them out and use coupon code MC101 for 5% off your Avid purchase or any other purchase, including G Technology Storage, software plugins, and so much more. And if you like this tutorial, please click that subscribe button. And don't forget that if you have any questions, you have any comments, or you have any tutorial requests, you can post them in the comment section below this lesson or you can send them to Kevin P. McAuliffe at gmail.com. This has been Kevin P. McAuliffe. Thanks a lot for watching.